السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome, uh, welcome my students to Cairo Dar. We will study today the iron properties and the iron reaction, chemical reactions in the last uh, lesson, lesson four of the first chapter, transition elements. And as we look to the slide, we will see that iron properties. Physical pro firstly, we will study the physical properties. The pure iron has no industrial and industrial use and characterized by number one, it's not very hard and is quite reactive. Number two, malleable and ductile. Number three, ferromagnetic. Iron is ferromagnetic. Number four, metals melt at 4,500 degrees centigrade and has and has density of 7.86 gram per cubic centimeter. So the physical properties of iron is are it's not very hard and it's quite reactive. Number two, it's malleable and ductile. Iron is ferromagnetic. Iron melts at 1,500 uh, 1, degrees centigrade and has density of 7.86 gram per cubic centimeter. So some elements such as carbon, manganese, nickel, chromium are added to pure iron to form alloy which have uh, alloys which have many uses. In second, second slide, we will see that the chemical properties of iron, we summarize all the reactions or the most of reactions of iron, like in this scheme, iron plus oxygen in the presence of heat, it will give a magnetite, Fe3O, Fe3O4. Iron in the presence of water vapor, at heat over 500 degrees centigrade it will give ferrous uh, ferric oxide ferric oxide magnetic uh, magnet uh, magnetite plus four moles of hydrogen iron plus three moles of chloride in the presence of heat it will produce it will produce two moles of ferric chloride iron is three chloride iron plus sulfur plus sulfur in presence of heat give us iron to iron to sul iron sulfide iron plus two moles of HCl iron plus uh, two moles of HCl diluted acid or concentrated acid it will give us ferric chloride plus hydro ferrous chloride plus hydrogen Ferrous chloride is iron to chloride. Iron plus diluted sulfuric acid, it gives us iron to sulfate, which is ferrous sulfate plus hydrogen. Iron plus concentrated sulfuric acid, in presence of heat, it produces ferrous sulfate plus ferric sulfate plus four moles of sulfur dioxide plus 8 moles of H2O. But iron with conch nitric acid, we obtain passivity property. The passivity property of iron with conch nitric acid, in which layer can, re, uh, this layer of passivity can be removed by scratching or by dissolving in diluted HCl. Passivity of iron which when it reacts with conch nitric acid it forms a uh, oxidation oxida oxidized later layer on the surface of iron this layer uh, causes the uh, uh, cause the protection of the iron metal from uh, exceeding or uh, excess of oxidation so this layer of uh, oxide, li oxide, oxide layer of iron which is produced by reaction of iron with conch nitric acid protect the iron from more oxidation 
because the, these molecules are very big and cover the molecules of iron. This phenomenon is called passivity. So the passivity is obtained, is carried out when the iron reacts with conch nitric acid. Now let's study the chemical properties of iron. The chemical properties of iron in this uh, in this slide we will see the effect of air or effect of water or the effect of non-metals on the iron as in the following equations. The effect of air, red hot iron, red hot iron reacts with dry air or oxygen to give to give magnetic iron oxide. So iron when react with oxygen in the presence of air, in the presence of heat, we will obtain magnetic iron mag magnetic iron oxide. The effect of water, red hot iron at 500 at 500 degrees centigrade acts with water vapor with water vapor to give iron oxide and hydrogen. It will give iron oxide, magnetic iron oxide, Fe3O4, plus 4 moles of hydrogen. The effect, the effect of non-metals on the iron. Iron reacts with, iron reacts with chlorine to give iron 3 chloride. Iron reacts with chlorine to give iron 3 chloride, ferric chloride, and with sulfur to give iron sulfide. Now give reason when iron reacts with chlorine produce iron 3 chloride, not iron 2 chloride. It's important question. Give reason when iron reacts with chlorine produce iron 3 chloride, not iron 2. That's because chlorine is an oxidizing agent which oxidizes iron 2 chloride to, uh, into iron 3 chloride. Chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent. It's, uh, it's oxidized iron to iron 3 chloride. Iron 3 chloride. And if any iron 2 chloride is produced, it will be oxidized too by chlorine to iron 3 chloride. If the iron 2 chloride is produced through during the reaction, it will be oxidized too by chlorine to iron 3 chloride. So the answer of this question is chlorine, chlorine is an oxidizing, is an oxidizing agent which oxidizes iron 2 chloride, which may be formed into iron 3 chloride. Number four, we will study the effect of diluted acids on, the, on iron. Iron dissolves in diluted as mineral acids. Uh, mineral acids, which are uh, sulfuric acid, uh, hydrochloric acid, HCl, uh, nitric acids, and phosphoric acids. The mineral acids are uh, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acids. So uh, iron dissolves, we, dissolves in diluted mineral acids to form iron two salts and hydrogen which prevent the formation of iron 3, iron 3 salts. The production of hydrogen will prevent, will prevent the formation of iron 3 salts. So the reaction of iron with diluted acid like uh, sulfuric acid diluted will obtain ferrous, oxide, ferrous sulfate, ferrous sulfate plus hydrogen. This hydrogen reduces any iron 3 salt which may be produced to iron 2 again. Iron plus 2 HCl, other mineral acid, hydrochloric acid, diluted HCl, it will produce ferrous chloride plus hydrogen. Give a reason when iron reacts with diluted HCl produce iron 2 chloride, not iron 3. 
This question is opposite to the last question in the, uh, in the, in the previous uh, slide. This question is opposite of that question in the previous slide. Effect of chlorine exercising agent is opposite to the effect of diluted acid on which produces iron 2 not iron 3 so when iron reacts with diluted acid produce iron 2 chloride not iron 3 because hydrogen produced because hydrogen produced reduces redu, uh, uh, reduced the, what is formed of iron 3 what is formed of iron 3 chloride to iron 2 chloride so the form a product only f uh, ferrous chloride iron 2 chloride not iron 3 chloride because hydrogen is a reducing agent and it will reduce any ferric chloride may be produced to ferrous chloride again other question give reason when iron reacts with dilute sulfuric acid iron 2 sulfate is formed and not iron 3 the answer la like the last answer because hydrogen produced reduce what's formed of iron 3 chloride iron 3 sulfate to iron 2 sulfate as we see in the, the equation iron plus sulfuric acid diluted it will produce ferrous sulfate plus hydrogen this hydrogen is the is a reducing agent it will reduce it will reduce any ferric sulfate which may be produced to reduce it again to be a ferrous sulfate feso4 now we study the effect of concentrated acids we studied the diluted the, the effect of diluted acids but now we will study the effect of concentrated acids iron reacts with hot concentrated sulfuric acid to give iron 2 sulfate iron 3 sulfate sulfur dioxide and water and as in this equation iron reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid concentrated in the presence of heat to produce ferrous sulfate ferric sulfate and four moles of sulfur dioxide and water vapor and water sorry and water when iron reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid both of iron 2 sulfate and iron 3 sulfate are formed because conch hot sulfuric acid is an oxidizing agent which oxidizes iron 2 Fe3O4 iron oxide magnetic iron oxide while uh, with uh, while the acid is reduced to the acids the acid is reduced to sulfur dioxide and H2O the sulfur uh, sul sulfuric acid is reduced to sulfur dioxide and H2O at the same time magnetic ferric, ferric oxide reacts with the acid forming iron 2 sulfate and iron 3 sulfate and water like in this equation according to this equation now we will study the iron oxides iron oxides are three types iron oxide iron 2 oxide feo iron 3 oxide fe2o3 magnetic iron oxide fe3o4 number one iron 2 oxide feo this oxide iron 2 oxide is black the preparation of iron oxide number one by heating iron 2 oxalate FeC2O4 iron 2 oxalate is heating to give iron 2 oxide plus carbon monoxide and the carbon, di carbon dioxide here we can note that uh, ferric oxide is not formed due to due to presence of CO carbon monoxide so the ferric oxide iron 3 oxide is not formed due to 
the presence of CO, carbon monoxide, which, which is reducing agent. Carbon monoxide prevents the formation of ferric oxide. The formation of carbon dioxide prevents the formation of ferric oxide. Here, give, give reason is a question. Give reason why Fe2O3 ferric oxide, iron 3 oxide is not formed according to this preparation from iron to oxalate because the uh, production, produ production of carbon monoxide which is reducing the agent and it prevents the formation of ferric oxide. The first preparation is by heating iron to oxalate Second preparation by reduction of higher oxides. Oxidation, a reduction by higher oxide, according to the two equations. As we see in first equation, iron three oxide plus hydrogen, reduction by hydrogen at 400 to 700 degrees centigrade, we will obtain two moles of uh, ferrous oxide, iron two oxide plus H2O. And oxidation of magnetic uh, iron three oxide by hydrogen at 400 to 700 degrees centigrade we will obtain two moles of iron oxide, iron 2 oxide plus H2O. So according to, to this box we will find that iron 2 oxide, iron 3 oxide, magnetic iron oxide plus hydrogen, hydrogen is reducing the agent at over 700 we reduce all these oxides to iron plus H2O. Hydrogen can reduce, can reduce iron oxide and iron 3 oxide and magnetic iron oxide to iron plus H2O. The properties of iron 2 oxide. Number one, the action of hot air. The action of hot air on the iron 2 oxide, hot air means oxygen on the iron 2 oxide by hot air heat will obtain iron to iron 3 oxide to moles of iron 3 oxide second action second property of iron 2 oxide action of diluted acids the action of diluted sulfuric acid on uh, iron 2 oxide in the presence of heat it will give us Ferrous sulfate plus H2O. Number three, it's black solid and insoluble in water. Iron 2 oxide is black solid and insoluble in water. Iron 2 oxide is easily oxidized in hot air. Now we study the property of iron 3 oxide, Fe3, Fe2O3. Preparation of iron 3 oxide. First method, iron uh, of preparation of iron 3 oxide. First method, two moles of ferrous sulfate in the presence of heat. Heat strongly, it will, uh, it will give us iron, two, uh, iron 3 oxide plus uh, sulfur dioxide plus salt, uh, 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 sulfur dioxide plus SO3 gas, sulfur dioxide and sulfur triple oxide. Second method is the uh, reaction of ammonium hydroxide on the ferric chloride, ammonium hydroxide the action of ammonium, ammonium hydroxide on the ferric chloride we will obtain we will obtain uh, ferric hydroxide ferric hydroxide is reddish brown precipitate plus ammonium chloride this precipitate of uh, ferric hydroxide as according to this equation is obtained from the action of ferric chloride plus ammonium hydroxide or a ferric chloride plus three moles of ammonium hydroxide, it will give a, it will give a ferric hydroxide. It's reddish brown. These two equations produce ferric hydroxide. 
the ferric hydroxide by heat at uh, temperature over 200 degrees centigrade uh, will give us uh, ferrous chloride, uh, ferric chloride, which is Fe2O3 plus uh, 3H2O. So we have we have two methods of preparation iron three oxides. First one, heating ferrous sulfate strongly it will give us ferric sulfate Fe2. Um, sorry, it will give us ferric oxide iron three oxide plus SO2, SO2 and plus SO3. Second method is reaction of ammonium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide with ferric chloride, iron 3 chloride, to produce iron 3 hydroxide, FeOHO3. This precipitate of uh, ferric hydroxide by heat at temperature over 200 degrees centigrade Will give us will give us ferric oxide, so we obtain ferric three uh, iron three oxide by two methods. First by heating ferrous sulfate. Second by obtaining ferric hydroxide. Then heating to obtain iron three oxide. We have to know that any metal of any metal hydroxide by heat give us metal oxide plus water. This is considered as a rule. We consider we will look to this rule as any metal oxide by heat give us metal oxide plus H2O. Except ferrous hydroxide which experimentally uh, difficult. Ferrous hydroxide by heat give us iron 2 oxide plus H2O. So generally as a rule any metal hydroxide by heat give us metal oxide. Any metal hydroxide. Any metal hydroxide except ferrous hydroxide. Except ferrous hydroxide. Iron 2 hydroxide. It's only experimentally by heat give us Iron 2 oxide, iron 2 oxide plus H2O. Here, a question, here is a question, write one use of iron dioxide, sorry, uh, iron 2 oxide, give one use of iron 2 oxide. Iron 2 oxide occurrence, it occurs in natural as hematite, its occurrence of, uh, sorry, iron 3 oxide its occurrence in natural as hematite. Hematite is iron 3 hydroxide. Properties of iron 3 oxide. Number one, it's insoluble in water. It's insoluble in water. It's used as red pigment in paint and rouge. Iron 3 oxide occurrence in natural as hematite. Iron 3 oxide properties is insoluble in water and iron oxide is used as red pigments in paints and rouge. Iron oxide reacts with hot concentrated acids to give iron three salts and water according to the next equation. Iron three oxide plus uh, conch sulfuric acid three moles in the presence of heat we will obtain uh, Iron 3 sulfate, iron 3 salt of sulfate plus 3 H2O. A third oxide of the iron oxides is magnetic iron oxide, Fe3O4. Its occurrence it occurs in the nature as magnetite. Iron, uh, magnetic iron oxide, it occurs in the nature as magnetite as magnetite. Magnetite is Fe3O4 where it's a mixed of oxides. Magnetite is a mixed oxides of ferric, ferrous oxide plus ferric oxide, iron 2 oxide and iron 3 oxide. 
the preparation of magnetic iron oxide by action of air on water vapor on heated red iron. The first method of preparation of iron uh, of magnetic iron oxide number one by heat by action of air on or water action of air or water vapor on the heated red iron according to this equation iron the effect the effect of air oxygen and the heat, presence of, of heat on the iron give us magnetic ma magnetic iron oxide so oxidation of iron and the presence of heat give us magnetic magnetic iron oxide or the effect of water vapor the presence of heat over 500 degrees centigrade give us uh, iron and magnetic iron oxide plus uh, four moles of hydrogen so the preparation of magnetic iron oxide is by action of air as, oxy as oxygen or action of water vapor on the iron on the iron to produce Magnetic, magnetic iron oxide. Number three, by reduction of iron three oxide, by reduction of iron three oxide by hydrogen or carbon monoxide. So the reduction of iron three oxide in the presence of heat, reduction of iron three oxide produce magnetic iron oxide. So the reduction, second method of preparation of magnetic iron oxide is by reduction of magnetic uh, iron three oxide by using carbon monoxide or hydrogen. The effect of reducing agent like carbon monoxide or hydrogen on the iron three oxide give us iron uh, magnetic iron oxide Fe3O4 plus CO2 carbon dioxide. Now we will study the last slide in this chapter of transition elements that properties of iron uh, magnetic iron oxide. Properties of uh, magnetic iron oxide, it has a strong magnetic property. Magnetic, uh, magnetic iron oxide has a strong magnetic property. Magnetic uh, iron oxide reacts with hot concentrated acids to produce iron 2 and iron C salts, which means that it makes it oxide. I, magnetic iron oxide when react with concentrated mineral acid, concentrated uh, sulfuric acid, in the presence of heat give us ferrous sulfate iron 2 and ferric sulfate iron 3 plus 4 moles of water. So when we, ha when give us a, a, when we have a question, give a reason, magnetic iron oxide is mixed oxides. That's because it oxidized oxidizes when it, it is heated in the air heat in the air to give iron three oxide magnetic iron oxide is oxidized uh, oxidizes by oxygen in the air to uh, iron three oxide now we are finishing the studying the transition chapter of transition elements and uh, by this uh, lesson uh, by this and by this lesson we finish uh, studying this uh, chapter and uh, uh, when you are following our lessons on the uh, the account of Kairudar we will find the choice questions which is a uh, quiz questions on each uh, lesson i hope to answer these questions uh, perfectly and if you have any question you can write it uh, and I will answer it for you uh, and the next lesson we will study uh, the next chapter of the chemical analysis and thank you for your attention goodbye